Hi, I'm T2 and I support Gen X Grown Up through Patreon because they're super gentle to my wires and boards. I think you should too. Go to patreon.com forward slash Gen X Grown Up. Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up podcast listeners, to this special edition of the Gen X Grown Up podcast. I'm John. Joining me, as always, is Mo. Hey, everybody. And George is here. Hey, how's it going, guys? We've been talking a lot. We've had a lot of extra time to talk lately. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> I haven't been going out much. Have you guys? I, I really have not. No, I've, I've been effectively grounded at this point, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like, but, but for introverts, this is like normal, but yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we got the, the coronavirus thing going on and the, you know, everyone is, was it shelter in place and social distancing and. Yeah. It, I mean, important stuff. I mean, you got to do this. I totally yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, yeah, not making light of trying to take care of ourselves and everyone else around us, of course. Right. Yeah, of course. And, and it, I, I'm usually a pretty calm and easygoing person, but even I have held a little anxiety recently. And I think that's justified if someone feels that way. Not just because you are you have a right to your feelings, but I mean, we have never lived through this in our lifetime. Going I know, back there to, is no backtrack thing for this. Right, exactly. There's, there's <laughs> right. no, you know. How, how was the quarantine when you were a kid? What? We didn't have one of those. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, the only thing I could think of even remotely close, not in our lifetimes, but I'm thinking like my dad's lifetime was like the polio outbreaks and they would oh, sure, quarantine sure. neighborhoods yeah. and stuff like that. But that's the only thing I could think of. Like, no, I, I, kind of past, yeah, you know? yeah, of course. We've lived through things. I mean, I haven't heard people saying even the Great Depression was not this impactful. But I mean, we lived through like the origin of AIDS and that came out and everybody mm-hmm. was still scared what was going on. And there was the SARS and the mad cow f- flu, the flu flower disease, and, and all that. None of it. disease. I mean, we yeah, the original oh, yeah. AIDS outbreak for our generation might be the closest because maybe there was a lot of unknown, a lot of fear yeah. because, you know, we didn't have the Internet yeah. at that time when it was coming out. It was just what you were seeing on news and everybody sure. was like, Oh, oh yeah. how can you get it if somebody coughs on your brain? Everybody was freaking out about that. Oh, you know, toilet first. seats and, you know. Right. Yeah. 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 I heard somebody say, you know, uh, <laughs> if soap kills it, maybe we should go back to eating Tide Pods. That was a big thing. <laughs> <for the> millennials. <laughs> <laughs> Children. Don't give me any suggestions, please. <laughs> yeah, We're not suggesting you should. <laughs> Official genetics growing up policy is you do not eat Tide we Pods. We don't just do that Just make that at very all. clear to people. <laughs> John just <laughs> killed our fourth listener. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Our <laughs> listeners are smarter than that. Are they? I, I well, I don't know. I, I hope I am. Because <laughs> I'm one of the first three. I hope I know not to eat a time <laughs> pot. <laughs> But everyone is quarantined and we were talking about, I mean, we kind of wanted to, we've been talking a lot because what else are you going to do? You know, communicate and talk with people. And it's not like you're going to do a coronavirus backtrack, like you said, George, (laughs) but we are quarantined. So we had the thought, you know, let's do a special edition talking about how we entertained ourselves when we were grounded as Generation Xers. Maybe it'll help a little. Yeah. Yeah, Well, that's something we all three probably know quite a bit about. So Uh, I don't think. A little bit. (laughs) Yeah. Grounded, I'll oh, give me a break. No, no, I just said a little bit. You know, yeah. Yeah. So let, let's start with that. I want to, so let's assume uh, that you've been grounded at some point. I'm going to start with Mo. Safe assumption. You had brothers, so it might have yes. been a different experience for you, but do you remember being grounded and for what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, you know, I was a kid. My stuff was usually uh, just stupid shit I did you know <laughs> it's like playing with matches or probably my biggest one was grades at some point the grades oh. you know like oh it's only an know. A where's your A plus Mo come exactly. on you're grounded you know tiger parents <laughs> 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 but really that was it because you know my dad was pretty much into like punish immediately not necessarily the whole grounding thing necessarily yeah uh, you just got you just got a whooping and it was done and with that was, it was over <laughs> Was, but so groundings in a sense were kind of worse, but also it was a little tough to ground us because like I said, I had brothers, so. Mm-hmm. Your playmates right there in the house. Yeah, exactly. So if you're going to ground somebody, <laughs> you got to ground everybody. And you ground everybody in separate rooms or something. I don't know. All right. I've been looking forward to this question for a week now. Oh, George, <laughs> do you remember being grounded and what for? <laughs> All right. I got my popcorn. I'm ready. Go. I know. I'm oh, ready. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me get comfortable. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> why why is the subject of my childhood misery all of a sudden popcorn fair? It's just your childhood in I just general. A, We're I just, fascinated. I just, my gut is telling me this is going to be really entertaining. It's I a good story, why. I'm sure. Because <laughs> you're freaking trouble, George. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't remember getting grounded. No, I'm just oh, kidding. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I got grounded just... last week. Um, <laughs> no, so, yeah, I got grounded, obviously. I got into plenty of mischief as a young man, as... A lot of people in my neighborhood did. Uh, We all, we were kind of one of those neighborhoods where the kids rode bikes together, you know, and made little ramps and forts and played different games of all kinds of social interaction. Mm. Army men where you threw rocks for grenades. Good Gen X Poked each other in the eye with sticks. You know, (laughs) that kind of stuff. You can take an eye out. (laughs) Until the poking of the sticks, I said it was a nice Gen X childhood. (laughs) Well, the rocks were, they weren't just lobbed. Oh. We didn't throw grenades like they did in the movie. We were trying to hurt somebody. You were beaning people. Yeah, we were... We were using our baseball skills to the max on those. Mm. I mean, it was okay, but we, I would say mostly I would get in trouble for one of two things. Uh, First one being an anger management issue, which, you know, surprise, surprise, right? (laughs) Uh, I would get mad at something one of my parents said and would blow up. And, you know, next thing I knew I was stuck in a room somewhere. You need to cool down, mister. Yeah. (laughs) You go to the room and think about what you just said. And the other one, oddly enough, was tearing stuff apart. And I don't mean like taking, Animals? you know, a picture and ripping it in <laughs> half. No. no, no. Okay, yeah, you sick just, bastard? Just what making wow. sure. With you? Right. Just making Oof. sure. All right. No. <laughs> Some questions need to be asked. We just had to check. <laughs> I just had this fascination with disassembling electronic things when I was oh, younger. I'm there with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would too. take apart like a calculator or I would even take apart the television. I remember now, here's doing a big that part. and getting in could big you trouble. Put it back you know? together? No, never could. Really. That was the problem. That was why I would get grounded because, you know, there'd be like leftover screws or cords or something and be like, I don't know where this went. Shit. I don't, I'm seven. What do you want I me to I remember do? one time <laughs> taking apart one of those flip, you know, the clocks that had the flipping numbers. Yeah. Right. Like take yeah. it apart. And I'm like, and I couldn't get it back together. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take it totally apart. I took out every little flippy number and those things were all over my room for the rest of my childhood. I was finding little halves <laughs> of numbers in closets and the bottoms of drawers and stuff because that thing was just exploded everywhere. Oh man, I, I, I did the same thing. I took apart because I thought it was kind of cool the way the flipping thing worked and I was yeah. trying to figure out how it worked and I got it apart. I put it together and I guess I didn't put the flippy things back the way they were. <laughs> so, there were alien letters and sort of numbers. Yeah, exactly. Too. It was like some sort of like, yeah, weird like the top of a seven and the bottom of a nine or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to call my mom in planning for this podcast because I literally could not remember getting grounded. So oh, wow. I called her. Yeah, I did. And she's like, oh my God, take a seat. <laughs> she told me, you know what? You were such a good child. I don't think you ever had to be grounded. I'm like, come on, mom. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, I do not believe that at all. I love your mother. I believe her in most yeah, every single so way. Amazing. <laughs> Nah, not believing that one at all. Well, I know I got to want to ground your ass right now. Uh, <laughs> like your mom is so nice, John. I can see her lying to you about that just so you feel just, good. About just your to make me right. feel good. <laughs> she doesn't want to share her pain and suffering right. with you. Exactly. He can't remember. I'm oh, going to shield him forget- from his own ignorance. Out. I'm not going to ruin that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the purposes of this show, I mean, I grew up in a very, very rural, kind of in the middle of nowhere. So she told me there wasn't a lot to take away. You were kind of grounded all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was able to take kind of take those memories in planning for this show, the kind of things that we did when we were like we are now. We're sequestered and quarantined and, uh, you know, you can't just go out and do whatever you want. You got to figure out a way to entertain yourself in yeah. the house. It weren't, we weren't always in trouble, though. I mean, Yeah, like in New York, I mean, we not grounded, but we had blizzards occasionally. And you oh, couldn't go sure. outside. Natural disasters. Yeah, yeah natural disasters. Stuff, you right? just yeah. could not go outside. We kind of have that, I guess, in hurricanes in the South, but it's yeah. very very concentrated. It just happens like one or two days and it's right. done usually. Yeah. In fact, one of the coolest things for me is after a hurricane, once all the is all the danger is passed, I love to go driving around just to see like this apocalyptic, weird world where oh, not everybody is out there. And if you've ducked out at all, it's kind of getting like that. Like the streets are oddly, they're a little too full yet, but they're kind of empty down in the in the south. But well, it depends on where you're weird. at too. Like I'm sure some of you have seen the videos of like Las Vegas Boulevard. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Like, that is bizarre. Bizarre. 
Right. Or San Francisco with a clear sky, right? Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like in China where they've been locked up for weeks now, because I visited China and it was like smog. You can see the top of buildings and now it's just like clear. It's like, wow. Really? Yeah. That quickly. Wow. It really goes to show you what an impact people have on the their immediate surroundings. Yeah. And so one other thing I bring up is that as a Gen Xer, like we all were, there were times growing up where, you know, you're just bored. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, because yeah, yeah, there yeah. wasn't, you sure. know, we didn't have as many things to keep our, occupy our time as we do now. Like no TV, TV wasn't 24 seven, internet, social media, all that stuff didn't exist. So we had to fill a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, let's start with our list of things we did to entertain ourselves when we were grounded growing up a Generation Xers. <laughs> Is this a PG list or a rated R list? Uh, well, okay, it's George. <laughs> I'm just asking. Uh, you see why we ask the questions we ask? Because <laughs> <laughs> we just just got to be sure. PG 13 ish, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. let's kick it in there. Yeah, let's do PG 13. Let's, let's shoot for PG 13. Mo, you mentioned uh, TV watching, of course. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, it really isn't, you know, it was like TV today, right? You were lucky if there was something on that you wanted to watch. You know, it, it was like either the movies are on were hit or miss. Yeah. Well, before VCRs came along, that's for sure. But yeah, before VCRs. Yes, for sure. Well, especially if we're talking about being grounded during the summer versus being grounded mm -hmm. during the school year. Right. Because during the school year, at least the grounding part that you had was you were at school. So that part of the day was taken up with activities. You were doing schoolwork and playing oh, with your friends sure. and all. Yeah. And so you only had nighttime TV, which I could often find something on nighttime. TV. Generally. Daytime. Yeah, TV yeah, during yeah. the summer sucked oh for a kid. Oh my God, it was And terrible. it was a double whammy. It was the summer, plus it was repeat season because yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, the prime season was over because like the summer, it was on vacation. So not running new episodes of, you know, all your favorite shows. You know, the freaking Incredible Hulk is repeating. I saw that one already. Right. You'd watch it again anyway, but well, still. Yeah. No, wait a minute. But, you know, we're talking about watching TV. There are types of grounding. Were you allowed to watch TV when you were like, how grounded were you? Kind it of depends degrees. on the age. I mean, because at one age, I get grounded. You get sent to your room. That was that's the main grounding technique. First of all, is being sent to yeah, your room. Yeah, just to your room. So yep. up until I was about like ten or twelve, going to your room meant that the only devices I might have had access to was like my record player, radio combo device, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. my desk with a pencil and paper and crayons or that kind of stuff. I think I know where you're going. Eventually, like twelve, I going had to your a room TV. wasn't a punishment anymore. Yeah, I put <laughs> in my room. Yeah, I know that my dad caught on. After a while, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not sending you to your room. That's where you want to. Be. <laughs> you yeah. go to the kitchen like damn it you, you figured it out <laughs> well the vcr image came along and of course you could if you had stuff that you yeah. you know you maybe couldn't go out and rent but you might have had a few things that you owned you could try to watch some stuff like that yeah, how I many people times do you watch that same movie <laughs> or the same three movies or i think that's why we know those old movies so well is mm -hmm. because yeah. we kill time watching them again and again you know we talked about flash gordon recently that's the reason why i can quote damn that's what you know so well. that film because yeah i must have watched that thing a hundred times. I can quote most of the Blues Brothers because it was one of the only three VHSs that I had for years and I just would watch it when I bored. Just yeah. rewatch something. There's stuff that's good and people are doing that now. I mean, geez, every streaming service is wide open and they're extending free trials and movies coming to out of theaters early to streaming and so you got that going for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. so that's, I guess that's something to do but but also, I mean, the other thing was the radio was definitely my friend when oh, I was grounded. Yeah. Back when the radio was really a almost yeah. like a social touchstone with local DJs and stuff. We did a right. whole backtrack about that, actually, about the local radio oh, experience yeah, yeah. and how different it was. There was a science to listening to the radio when you were grounded, though, right? Mm -hmm. Either records or radio. Yeah, okay. You had to have a, he a set of headphones. You had to have that long enough cord to reach wherever your comfortable place was, like <laughs> and, and, and it was the spirally or, pigtail cord back then. Spiral was it? pigtail <laughs> yeah, cord. Yeah. And then you would put the headphones on and try to somehow cover yourself up with it so that if somebody walked in the room to check on you, they couldn't see them, maybe, or something, which was never going to be possible. They're going to see this long pigtail cord. <laughs> I mean, those cord, headphones you know? were like the size of like the NASA astronaut helmets. I mean, those right. things were huge. <laughs> oh yeah, they were enormous. <laughs> well, it made listening to the radio more of an experience. Like it wasn't, you're right, George, there are two kinds of listening to the radio, right? There's like turning it on in the background. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, I'm in Footloose and the world's against me. And I got these giant things on right. my head and I'm isolated in my world. And that's the kind you're talking about that was really like cathartic. You want to hear your yeah, favorite the song? The visual that always comes to my mind is uh, from that movie Dazed and Confused near sure. the end yeah, of yeah, it, yeah. the young yep. man gets home and you know he's been out all night and his mother's like okay this is your one get out of free jail card thing you know i'm not going to punish you this time but next time you're you're toast and he's like okay whatever mom he's still kind of high and drunk and he goes into his room he lays down on his bed and he puts those massive as mo yeah. said you know nasa yeah. helmet <laughs> headphones <laughs> on of and course. he just lays back and 
is reminiscing over the night as he's listening to the radio. Yeah. Exactly. That's what grounding was like for me, being grounded, listening to the radio. It was just listening to music and thinking about whatever I was in my little teenage brain yep. at that point. And thinking like, man, that was so worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> you're going to be grounded sucks and you're cranking up Depeche Mode and you're you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, I could get that. You could do some useful stuff sometimes when you were grounded. It's not what they expected you would do, but I never in normal life when I wasn't bored, did I want to like <laughs> rearrange my room or anything. But sometimes when I was either grounded or in trouble or kind of sequestered in my room, I would definitely, I'm going to move that table over here or whatever. There's something refreshing about I've got the time to do it. So I would do it. Yeah. Now, would you do it with like trying to do something for yourself or would you do it like I did trying to make a bunch of noise to piss your parents off even more? Like just <laughs> slamming stuff against the wall. I was mad as hell. So it was, you know, throwing a bed or whatever. Oh I could. my goodness. No, I was not spite rearranging. I was yeah. actually <laughs> rearranging for my own benefit. I hate rearranging. My youngest son even does that to this day. Like when he was like 14 or 13, I would say, you know what? Go to your room. You're done for a while. He would would slam the door and then you'd hear stuff in there and you'd hear him my god son of a and you know what george you get what you give yeah <laughs> yeah it all comes back around Karma's don't it? a bitch <laughs> you're thinking to yourself i bet that little son is in there slamming stuff on the wall just to spite me he's like oh crap i used to do that <laughs> that's the good thing though because i know that's probably what he's doing doesn't bother me as much i can just sit there and, all right, right. All right I'll just turn which, volume which up makes him even angrier that it's not upsetting you <laughs> <laughs> i still remember like times like I'd be grounded and my dad would come in to check on me and he'd look and I'd be like cleaning and he'd be like damn you are bored <laughs> are you okay uh, what else we could uh, we could do some reading there's that oh, choose yeah. your own adventure books reader. you could always go back through we just talked yeah. about those not yeah long a little ago. bit yeah the, those kinds of things I would do not regular just stories but choose your own adventure things because that was more game like and felt more fun yeah well, I think Mo is the heaviest reader amongst oh, yeah. us sure. I, reading I would, I would was read. never my go to but I know it was for you oh yeah absolutely I mean, there was, I could tell you books I probably read two or three times easily, you know, just because I was grounded or that was the only books I had on my shelf at the time, you know, so yeah, yeah. I'd reread them several times. But yeah, reading was definitely my uh, time killer if I needed something to do. Well, there's other creative things too. I mean, what about drawing? I know that we yeah. all have a at least passive interest in art. I mean, none of us are awesome artists. I was an excellent ruler drawer. Yeah, I was ruler an drawer? excellent ruler, ruler drawer. drawer. <laughs> if you took like the Battlestar Galactica Viper 1, I could line it out because oh, it was right. all angles yeah. and straight lines. Make it like mathematical shapes, yeah, right? It's not... I could do that. Now, freehand drawing? No. Tracing? Sure. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I could I could trace like a motherfucker. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I got the tracing down. I can think of times when I had like, I specifically remember an Incredible Hulk, one of those digests, little small books, and I'd put tracing paper over it and mm -hmm. I would draw and I think, I'm learning how to draw. And in my head, I'm like, there'll be this documentary about me in the future explaining how my, initially <laughs> wow. I traced and I learned how to draw well. And it never happened, of course, but I fantasized about it. No. I sometimes would take that time to play with toys that you could not otherwise have found time to play with. Like I had a monster maker, the thing where you laid down pieces of monsters. And oh, you right. The three different the levels. Charcoal. Yes. And you yeah. scrape oh, the yeah, charcoal yeah, yeah. pencil over it and then you color it in. And you're like, look, I did this. No, you didn't. You picked three <laughs> random body parts <laughs> right. and you swiped some charcoal, but it looked cool. Yeah. Hey, it, it did what it was supposed to do, which was, was creative. make you feel like you were creating art. I thought I was making a monster from scratch. I remember doing Spirograph. Oh, yeah. Spirograph was the one drawing one that oh, I loved hell oh when yes. I was a kid. Oh, that yeah. was a lot of fun. Right. That was amazing. That's another one of those that you drag out of the closet when you're grounded and bored. Right. Because it's not like, wake up in the morning, I'm going to do some spirograph. Woohoo! No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you drag out the spirograph and the light bright and all the stuff that never well, gets used. that's what I was about to say. It's not necessarily drawing, but I still have my original light bright. Seriously? Do you? Yeah. Still works. Still, the bulb still works and everything. I remember getting that thing out, putting the black, you know, construction paper in yep. it and you just start poking stuff in there randomly randomly and like look i made a chicken and it looked like a fire hydrant or something you know right <laughs> you know they're still selling light bright you can get those new still they have like a uh, really throwback what? retro kind of everything retro is hot yeah. right but now i think it's like an led lights instead now instead of oh, i hope not i almost i almost bought a I light get like a retro <laughs> small version one to put on my office desk now now that i'm thinking about it, that's what i want for my oh, office that would be a cool thing to have you sitting at your desk wouldn't it mm -hmm. yes it would oh man i 
Amazon.com. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> Amazon's not grounded right now. Damn it. Uh, yep. I used to do a lot of writing too. Mm, like yeah. I would just make up stories or whatever. Today it'd be called uh, fan fiction or whatever. Fan fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> but back then it was just killing time. I don't know. I wrote two full novels. What? Yeah. No, I usually get about a third of the way through what a story. I would consider and get bored. novels. They were like 120, 150 pages or so. Yeah. Damn. Well, yeah. Get them published, dude. Yeah. Oh, no. Self published now. No, I was like 11. It was like Space Raiders across the <laughs> Galaxy was the, like what? It's hey, smarter than a lot of crap that's probably out there these days. Exactly what I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> probably still good. Yeah, it's probably better than most. Well, what else are we dragging out of the closet? We talked about our light bright and stuff, but there was a lot of leisure entertainment stuff that you could do when you were grounded and bored. I had like I guess like, probably an advantage over you choose. I had brothers, sure. Which when you were stranded in the house, you always had at least one other person who wanted to do whatever, play Monopoly, play Risk. Who was equally bored? They were yeah, exactly. in the same situation. You on a you were. desert. Right. Island by yourself. Exactly. Or exactly. Oh, you, now, now, speaking of brothers, before you launch into that, I have to ask you. So, was it like a chicken pox scenario in your house when you got grounded? Which is like when one kid's grounded, does it kind of splash back on everybody? Because how do you bit. ground one kid in a house? Yeah, it's it's not easy because we all had to share rooms. So I, you know, with one other brother. Right. So if I got grounded or he got grounded, he was almost like a pariah. Like you could, like, you know, you could. So don't don't talk to Ronnie. He's in he's in trouble. <laughs> not allowed to talk. Oh, I see. You know, so so oh, you okay. walk in a room, you kind of avert your eyes or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so you'd become persona non grata. Like you don't exist. <laughs> Social basically. pariah because. If you got caught entertaining him at all, right. then you got grounded too. So it was like, mm, nobody right? be nice to Mo. He's in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and then you look all sad. And, okay. You know. I was curious about that. All right. Yeah. So what kind of stuff would you do with your brothers with your advantage? Oh, I mean, things like board games for sure. Card games. I mean, we played, God, I can tell you how many war and spades and Like I did a lot of and, cards, you know. not games, but practicing magic tricks and stuff because I didn't have brothers or anything. So played a little bit of solitaire, but mostly just magic tricks trying to figure them out. Well, what kind of board games would you play that you remember from them? Uh, Monopoly was huge in my house, mostly with me and my I, older brother when yeah, he was visiting. Yeah, but I didn't have yeah. any brothers, so I couldn't play board yeah. games. So yeah, well, I had I brothers was, that lived with me. I had halves, and sometimes they would visit. Monopoly was yeah, the one that I'd get crushed I out a lot. Nothing. My, my half-sister that would visit us during the summer was like 12 years older than me and couldn't give a crap about a 10-year-old <laughs> grounded half-brother. She was yep. like, nope, I'm in Florida from Kentucky. I'm going to the beach. Good luck, kid. That was it. <laughs> no, we had the, the standard ones monopoly of course so everyone had that yep. one we had risk sorry sorry is a big one mm, yep. yeah 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 pop matic trouble you had to have that one. Oh, i didn't have that one though but that you was pop matic trouble with the, the dome have in have the middle one. You could pop yeah. up, little dice come up. That's, that's an entertainment in and of itself, even if nobody's playing. Just pop the dice and make noise. That's good. Yeah, talk about pissing off your parents. You just keep hitting that thing. That's right, George. You should have gotten a popomatic trouble. That's right up your alley. Yeah, right. <laughs> just this one's making myself, noise. Let's play with this one. Oh, I'm grounded, Emma. You're not sleeping. <laughs> pop up, pop up. Pop. So, so, John, I know you were D and D kind of kids. Did you make up your own dungeons and that kind of fun oh, stuff? Oh man, when I was sequestered away, either again when I was never grounded because I was such a good child. But oh, when I was Jesus, <laughs> on my own somewhere where I couldn't play. So he was on his own so he never got caught. That's the issue. That's what it was. Well, I mean, D&D &D is such a social game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know that when I was by myself and bored, I spent so much because I, I, I dungeon mastered or dabbled. I yeah. thought I dungeon mastered as a kid. I, I have since learned that I wasn't crap compared to people that do it well. But I fancied myself a DM and so I would write uh, modules of my own. I would mm -hmm. draw up maps. I would do, remember Baba Yaga's Hut was part of oh, this yeah, mythology. Yeah. I mapped out all the floors inside of Baba Yaga's hut so somebody could buy it. They could live in it. We could have adventures inside of it and crazy stupid stuff. But I didn't play D&D &D so much as I did prepare to play D&D &D if I was <laughs> yeah. stuck home yeah, alone. That was, I, I mean, graph paper was like my friend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That was like yeah. toilet paper is today. It's like it's a commodity <laughs> that's super valuable. I need more yeah. of it. Yeah. I mean, I used the back of pages and front of pages and sure. Yeah, yeah. I, nothing went to waste with graph paper. Oh, no. And if you ran out of graph paper, you had to make your own, which was always <laughs> a pain in the butt you know yeah. back to the ruler drawing for you right. you're good yeah. with that no problem <laughs> let me say i used to make the most elaborate dungeons you know early D, &D it wasn't as it was more just like dungeons and each room had a monster and a treasure and you just move mm -hmm. around not yep. necessarily yeah, right, right. goal not really yeah you might create some it. kind of a, a overall story but it was very much let's see who you encounter now let's see who you encounter yeah, now like, yeah you, sure. know, you pick all the monsters you want to and you want to figure out how you're going to kill your friends and that was about it but yeah <laughs> i spent a lot of time on that and the D, D books were definitely i mean i would sit there like
like trying to find a monster for a particular room and then realize I spent like an hour just reading the book. Sure. Flipping yeah. that page, ooh, and then reading this one and reading that one. So yeah, spent a lot of time I know, doing I'd, that. I'd, I would create some non-player characters with elaborate backstories sometimes. I would roll up all <laughs> whole character sheet and I'd give them a bunch of gear and stuff. And then I hope I get to play with this guy sometime and I'd make up guys. And then I'd hate if they didn't want him. They'd meet him and go, man, I don't care. I'm like, I have a whole sheet for him. You're supposed to like him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I geared him especially. One thing that happened was uh, when I was uh, in Denver, actually visiting my cousin, and we got stranded in a snowstorm up there. Uh-huh. And we actually made up our own wars board game out like, of like we had, parts of other board games, or no, no, we had like this huge, we had this, this huge roll of like uh, hex paper, like they used okay. for that. So we made up our own like cardboard things to represent tanks and airplanes. We drew maps on it, came up with. Oh, our so you were making like an Axis and Allies game out of yeah. wow before it existed. Wish I wish I still had it because I could probably sue somebody That's for about copyright. Twenty but. years earlier in his life than we made our Kai Tom Clue board game, John. <laughs> he was way <laughs> know, more right? industrious yeah. than we were, which was basically just repurposed Clue, right? You're right. <laughs> what was that you guys did? So in our Star Trek club, you know, we had ranks and positions and, and races and everything. And so we do we rebranded the entire Clue board game with characters. We made the characters in the game, our friends, officers uh, in the Star Trek club. Uh-huh. And they all had, you know, oh, it was Captain Blood with a phaser in the bridge. You know, it was whatever. It's, <laughs> it's instead of being, da, da, da. And so we rebranded every room, every weapon, every character. And we even like we printed out pictures on stuff. <laughs> yeah, we made little laminated cards the whole night yeah years. wow and we had the props from the toys like the action figures had That's a phaser so that oh, phaser right. was the prop in the game you know instead of a candlestick you actually had a little phaser and stuff <laughs> oh yeah we were super nerds but <laughs> wait what other weapons did you have other than phaser oh batleth we had uh, you had the, you had the uh, ferengi whip was one right? of them everything wow. that had an action figure you know because we were just slightly over college age people who had nothing else to do with their lives infinite time and energy but no money there was a lot of effort put <laughs> oh, into there was. this way more than should have been <laughs> yeah man i wonder where that is i wish i had that and i wish i had your axis and allies game that you made mo oh yeah. yeah really you know one of the things that i did quite a bit because i didn't have brothers like you guys did or siblings or anything i just used to make up forts when I, especially when i was young young like four to eight years oh, old yeah of couch cushions and stuff and yeah you take a chair oh, inside in forts. the bed oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you take a blanket and you put them you stretch it out between them and you put books on them to hold them in place and everything and that became its own little magical world so you john talked about making up all these characters and places in dungeons and dragons yep. i didn't really do a lot of that because i didn't get into dungeons and dragons until late middle school early high school but i made my own realities in that one little room that i was grounded in so what what kind of stuff did you use to build your fort? I mean, I know you said like a chair and a blanket stuff. You'd like dismantle couches and use all the cushions and stuff. Or well, I mean, you use? I couldn't get out of the room. So it was whatever was available <laughs> whatever to you me had. in the room. Got it. So uh, like clothes from the closet would, you know, make doors <laughs> and stuff and <laughs> hangers would make different things and so, whatever I could find. And I would break a lot of stuff to make the fort and that would get me in more trouble. <laughs> so. yeah, more trouble. <laughs> like, George, you've been in your room for five weeks now. Come on, stop doing that. Right. There's something cool about just kind of being being enclosed inside of a smaller little tiny space in your mm-hmm. room that's cool. Yeah. When I grew up, I lived in uh, mobile homes, you know, manufactured housing and stuff, and those had air conditioning in the floor. Uh-huh. And so oh, sure, right. we would always take like a nice bed sheet and pin down all the sides over the vent. And then when the air came oh. on, it would blow up this like igloo over you <laughs> that was super cool because we're in Florida and it's hot. And also it became this awesome bubble. And it was all about making as airtight as you could by just weighing down the sides. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was similar to your fort, but it, it required no construction up. You just had to get it sealed to the ground and wait for it to get hot enough to kick on. And then poof, this balloon. Yeah, because you weren't changing the you. temperature on that thermostat. No, I wasn't. T- you had to wait. If you did you that, your it. parents were going to kill you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who touched the thermostat? <laughs> did you guys ever play with army men did you have army men all the, the time dude? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. oh yeah so that yeah. was a big thing for me was like take a blanket muss it up and then that would be like the terrain for mm-hmm. my army guys that'd be the hills and books would be the forts or whatever you've talked com- about you know, that several times i know you did that in the car you've done that you know it was all about the, yeah. th- those big blankets creating terrain for you and i never thought of that that was genius i wish i wish we had been friends as kids <laughs> i would have had much more fun with my army men yeah we used to do it like i used to do it on my desk i would stack the books in different ways to make 
mountains and oh, okay. yeah. then they would jump off the books onto the bed and the bed had the sheets like Mo was talking about. So you'd have the different terrain and everything. And then if I was outside, which, you know, we're grounded, so I couldn't go outside, but outside you would dig the trenches and the dirt oh, exactly. and you yep. would take the water hose and uh-huh. make it into a river. And Army men were one of the best imagination tools that I had growing up. I think my imagination was broken because I never <laughs> pictured that. The only thing I ever did with Army men is I imagined they were somehow tiny men and they were dealing with the real world. It was like a honey, I shrunk the kids environment. Like I never said, oh, that book is a mountain. <laughs> like Toy Story kind of thing. No, well, no, they, they, in my imagination, <laughs> the army men had been at war and they somehow got sucked through a portal and they were in my room and they <laughs> well, were dealing with all my big I stuff. I guess that's a, that's a broad imagination because it's different broad, than most actually. people would use army men for. I guess, but I mean, I wish I'd not have used them right. I <laughs> <laughs> just, they were never I mean they were shooting and stuff but they were shooting because oh here comes the cat you know they're upset at that they're, they're not fighting anybody <laughs> okay do you guys ever make your own paratroopers with army men with like a handkerchief with a handkerchief oh, absolutely yeah. oh yeah. yeah I mean that was like spent so much time trying to master that because the store bar paratrooper sucked no let me oh, tell yeah. you <laughs> no. that little bastard strings around his parachute we get so tangled, tangled up yep. that never worked and in my world it was an actual handkerchief it wasn't even a <laughs> parachute they're right. just like we found a handkerchief. Yay, we can jump. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who fits Iron Man is like thinking, listening to this, going to like, oh my God. Oh, what's that's wrong? That's not what they were for, dude. Just, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending on if you were totally grounded or partially grounded, or I mean, I was fine because I was never grounded, as I mentioned, but talking on the phone. Oh, here we go again. My mother told me she would not lie. Sure she did. <laughs> For you, she would. <laughs> so you maybe you could talk on the phone to your friends. That's nope. something you maybe yeah. could do. No, nope. yeah. yeah, especially if you didn't have one in your in your room. We had one in the house. One in the house. Yeah, yep. and it was in the it was on the kitchen counter. So there was no way in hell that was you weren't getting, getting to, the room. to it. Nah. When I was about twelve, I got my own phone line. Oh, yeah, in my I, I my own phone number. And man, I, I would get anybody who asked my phone. Number. I have my own number. Here's my own number. You can, it's not my house. You can call me. It's my number. Man, that got parlayed pretty quickly into being the modem line. And then the rest of yeah, that is of history. But I got mine when I was like 16. And then it became the modem line for the bulletin board that I ran. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I know one thing that I did now. Again, this was another way of annoying my parents uh-huh. uh, whenever they would ground me. <laughs> I had a game that I made up called Tennis Ball Wall. And I'm sure it's no different than anybody else would have had it's not like it was a unique game with a unique set of rules but i would just take a tennis ball i would lay on the bed and i would take a tennis ball and throw it against the opposite wall from me yeah and i would see how many times i could throw it against the wall and catch it with the same hand without missing so it developed a lot of hand-eye coordination i thought you're gonna say before you got a beating yeah well (laughs) and that was you know usually you get up to like 10 and (laughs) It's like Mr. Owl. Stop One, that. A two, a three, and then the beating comes. Right? <laughs> but you were doing it inside. Okay. You yeah. Were stuck in your room. Your I bed. had this image of, you ever seen the movie The Great Escape? No, that was uh, Steve McQueen. War movie, right? right? Yeah, that's Steve yeah. McQueen. So the thing is that every time he got in trouble and got thrown into the hole, a guy would throw him a ball mm-hmm. and he would be sitting in this cell with the ball throwing it against the wall. And that's the yeah. image I have of you, George. It's just like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right, now, now, George, complete the image where you're also grumbling under your breath, like, stupid jicker, brr. As you no, threw. no, I, oh, it was. I wasn't grumbling in my breath. I, I actually had fun because I was big into baseball. So for me, okay, tennis yeah. ball wall was that was yeah. awesome. Right. I mean, I would try tricks with it. You know, throw it against one wall out in the corner to bounce off the, off the other wall, and- catch it with the <laughs> other hand, whatever I could. I was making up different trick shots that I. They weren't really trick shots. You're just throwing it as it hard as you like can it. and see where it goes. But right, the ricochet. Now, and parents would act like you're destroying the wall. No, I'm not. The tennis ball is doing no damage. It's just that it's annoying, the sound. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it was annoying yeah. as hell. Yeah. That had nothing to do with why you're playing it, though. <laughs> All right. The actual little bit of damage that I was able to do tossing a ball around in my room was when I visited my grandmother because she had those popcorn ceilings. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. With a tiny little beads of foam that were blown on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And she knew if I'd been screwed around st- throwing stuff at the ceiling because there were like confetti on the floor everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't get grounded for destroying your grandmother's ceiling? That's no, some bullshit. My grandma didn't tell on me. She just said, stop oh. it. And it cleaned up after me. Yeah. Wow. wow. So you did get in trouble. You just didn't get punished for it. I got in trouble. Believe me. No, I did stuff. I screwed <laughs> up and I got sc- I got sent to my room and all that stuff. Like I said, my mom just couldn't remember. She's like, I don't remember ever actually like grounding you. I don't think we had to. It is to. so not fair that you didn't suffer the same Gen X grown up abuse 
use that Mo and I did. Yeah. You really? know, if I had, That's not right. I would have had time to watch the Goonies probably, right? It's just that I didn't get the time because I wasn't grounded. That's my problem. George, I'm convinced that it was just so horrible. He just blocked it out. Uh, that's probably true. Whatever right? you think. Yeah, I'm going with that. Okay, sure. <laughs> Believe that. Did you have your Atari 2600 at any point when you were grounded? I did. Because that was sure a great way to kill time. Yeah, after I uh, got the television in the room, the Atari 2600 got moved in there that day. Oh, I'm sure. Of course it did. Once I got grounded. <laughs> that's I that's had, where it belongs now. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't need to be on the living room TV where dad would get pissed off at me. No, so nope. it got moved in with me and that became the de facto device for grounding in enjoyment after that. <laughs> You're killing time babysitter. Oh, yeah. That was like almost not being grounded. So during this, like I mentioned, like some anxiety and stress, I'm finding that if I just pick a game, like I went back to Crackdown 3, that game that came out, what, a year, two years ago now. Yeah. It's just like a run around, jump on buildings and blow stuff up. And it's not that I like want to finish the game, but I said, there's a game I'll try. And it's just killing time in a way that completely absorbs your brain. And during that moment, you forgot about, oh, there's a scary the that- thing going around, your quarantine, yeah, whatever. Right. I'm sure that worked just as well as a kid being grounded. You, know, I mean, I know that hours slipped away easily, whether I was grounded or not playing that. So what a great way to to accelerate time to get past being in trouble, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Yar's Revenge was my oh, like, God, pacifier yes. oh, being man. grounded. Oh, I couldn't yeah. stand that game. What? what? I know. Oh, I know. my I know. goodness. I know. I know. I know. I think it's because you're bad at it. If you were good at it, <laughs> you just need Yar's I'm, Revenge I'm lessons. Gonna, I'm not going to argue that point, actually. <laughs> it could have been it. Why didn't you like it? What was wrong with it? I don't know. It, to me, it just was monotonous. Yars Revenge? For wow. For me, it was. It was. I don't know why. It I is just, repetitive, could, but it's progressive. It. Oh, my goodness. We, we mm. need to spend I mean, some time together, people, Mo. Everybody else fixed. loved the game, and I just tried to love it. I really did, and just couldn't. Mm, man. I would have thought somebody who was so big into Cubert would have enjoyed right? Yars Revenge. Yeah, so the Cubert's awesome. Cubert is similarly <laughs> repetitive, though. I mean, it's the same map every time, right. just a little harder each time, you know? Yeah, I, 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 there's no rational explanation for it. Okay, all right. <laughs> he's not defending his position, he's just admitting it. I get it. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> he admits that he's wrong about it, he just doesn't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't like bacon. What? <laughs> What's wrong with you? How oh, do you I not like bacon. bacon? I love bacon. <laughs> I'm just broken. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah it's, it's just a deficiency. I me. Mean, I don't know why. Oh, I just accept you know, it. the number one time killer, probably for me, if I was in my room for any amount of time being bored, was probably cracking open that Lego case. Oh, yeah. I had yeah. so much yeah. like space Lego, especially. I know you guys are jealous of all my old space Lego used to yeah, have. We've mentioned before. Uh, I just had regular old Lego. I didn't have yeah. like sets or anything. It was just whatever random pieces I had. In my humble opinion, because it's me, I'm going to say that I played with Lego the correct way when I was a kid. And oh, by which Correct way. Wait, well, no, 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 are you men trying to like avoid your Legos or something? No, no, I'm, I'm, they... I'm not being hoity-toity. It's just I'm so right now it feels to me there's a trend of people buying sets and building the set, yes, and then put it on a yeah, shelf or something. I do that, right? I do that right now sometimes. And, and yeah. I, I, now, admittedly, I do that right now too because I'm a grown up with crap I have to do. But when I was a kid, I think the right way to play with you buy the set, you build the set, you destroy the set, and then you just play with the bricks. And okay, make your own I'll thing. I'll grant you that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll grant you that. I'll give you that yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, because I built whatever the space sets were with the, the monorail and this particular thing. I did that. And then those instructions, God knows where they went. But then I had a giant box of space Lego bricks. And that's, I think, I know that's the intent when the creator of Lego, they're supposed to be blocks, not yeah. sets. Those are ways to sell it. Right. They meant for you to use your creativity, not just build, follow the instructions. And while that's, there's some fun in building what's on the box because they're nicely constructed and planned, man, just, the imagination of like, what are we building? Well, this is a robot. Well, I don't have this piece. Well, he's a robot with a red arm. Okay, well, that's all I have left. And it was so much fun to just, like the video game, the Atari stuff, it just, it would kill so much time digging for that one little piece and building it and imagining what it was like. What thing I hate about, not hate about Legos, but things that would frustrate me is like, like you said, you're just kind of going off this creative tangent, yeah, right? Yep. And you're like, okay, I got this one and all you need is this one particular piece to make it perfect and you don't have it. <laughs> it, yeah. it doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. I need a, a two by four piece of fit right here and I'll make the thing look awesome and then you're looking you're like oh my god I don't have that you know I used it over here for this right, and if I take yeah. it out of there that'll be ruined <laughs> well the pro tip there's sometimes you can go and find somewhere you use that same piece and find another piece that doesn't compromise the design there to take it back out and use it where you need it critically so that's yeah the... I probably was not that roundabout thinking yeah, no. I was probably more like I need this piece now <laughs> I got you to that piece. Point and it just now it's I'm gonna break it apart and do something new that's yep. what would yep. happen invariably got X amount of distance into it 
and you're like, eh, I can't do that right. Let's move on. Yeah. There are a lot of ways that we used to kill time when we were grounded or <laughs> sequestered away or, you know, in this day and age, currently, who knows how long this is going to last, the quarantine thing and everybody's feeling cabin fever and uh, the anxiety I mentioned and the worry and the, I really hope that either listening to this gave you a little joy or maybe some of the ideas in here, you know, gave you some, uh, some ideas of how you can kill time either yourself or with your kids or whatever. If there's a new story about a light bright spike at Amazon, we'll know where it's it us. From. It's us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm putting a link in the show notes to Amazon to yeah. buy your own light bright. Click on it and go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, if nothing else, if they listen to this whole thing, they killed almost an hour. You right know there. what? Yeah. There you go. That helped. There's a, and listening to you like listening to music. You know, and today listening to podcasts is a great way to do it. Yeah. Oddly, we've seen a downturn in listenership since the quarantine thing, which confused me. And then when I mm-hmm. talked to the uh, the guy that supports us, our, our partner or whatever. Green, he said, yeah, I think it's because people aren't in their regular routine. People who listen on the car to work and those kind of things, yeah. they're not doing that anymore. Yeah, I, that's true for me. You know, I wasn't a podcast listener before we started doing this. Right. And right. I've got podcasts that are, they're auto downloading. So they're getting counted for those podcasts. Mm-hmm. But like you had mentioned to me once before, John, not everybody does the auto download thing. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. I have this huge long list of podcasts that I just don't listen yeah. to because a the backlog only of stuff way you otherwise would have heard driving in my car. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Same here. Yeah, I, I have to like train myself to, okay, well, I'm going to listen to this show because normally, again, it would be in the car and I'm like, I really want to hear this episode, but I don't want to just focus on that. I want to do something else. So I find something else to do. I straighten my man cave or something and listen to podcasts. So, yeah. you know, another great way that we're killing time. If you're interested, we've talked about our Discord. We were doing Discord gaming. Yes. We've ramped that mm. up to done it most every night lately. Yeah. If, we have enough, if enough people want to play, we're there usually, right? Yeah. 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 And a lot of different game variants. I mean, we started off mostly with just the Jackbox party pack stuff. Stuff. But I've been seeing people wanting to play Ticket to Ride. We're playing Use Your Words. Mm-hmm. You've got that new game that you just wanted to test out through yeah. uh, whatever that other service is that we can play through. <laughs> Parsec. Yeah. yeah, in Parsec. Parsec. Yeah. yeah, we started playing some games. through. It's like a modern, gritty, bloody Mario Party. It's like a big board game kind of thing. There's a wrecking ball. Let's just let's see if it's Pummel that. Party, it was called. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a wrecking ball in it. So We're yeah. doing a lot of stuff on there. And, and we would love for more of our fourth listeners to come and join us. We have found the more people involved, the more hilarity ensues. So we would love yeah. you know, hit that sweet spot of five or six people in the evenings. Although warning, it does get juvenile. <laughs> it, it does appear yeah. to get juvenile. That's right. <laughs> but that's PG-13 is the starting point and then it, <laughs> it just is, goes it from is. there. That's true. Yeah, then it goes downhill from there. Yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't take much to be able to play. You don't have a supercomputer or anything. A lot of them, all you need yeah. is, is typing, right? So if that sounds like it might be up your alley, you could join us. Head over to genxgrownup.com slash discord. That'll redirect you to the invite to our room. Yeah. Introduce yourself, say hi, and uh, we'll show you what to do if you want to take part. It's another way to kill time on these. You get that seven or eight o'clock at night when you take off your day pajamas and put on your night pajamas. And <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do to kill time? Yeah. So that's about the times you're doing them now, like like seven, eight-ish, right? Yeah. Are yeah. we supposed to be changing clothes during this? Because I haven't changed clothes in like a week and a half. Is that well, that's because you're, be not, you're not putting on pants, George. If you, if you had no, pants, yeah. you would change yeah. pants. See, that, if, that's if you're wearing thing. clothes in there, that's what you would do. <laughs> like the only time I'm putting on shorts is like if it, pizza delivery is coming in. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I want them to keep delivering, so. <laughs> okay. Got to put on some shorts to answer the door. Just tell them to drop it off. I'll get it when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've been guilty of that. Oh, horrible. <laughs> I've been guilty. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> you know, I, I hope it's been helpful for someone to uh, listen to this. I hope you found some cool stuff in it. Uh, it's been, definitely been useful and cathartic for me. So I want to thank you, George and Mo, for oh, uh, humoring me, getting together, talking about this stuff. Yeah. You know, one more thing on the top of your list. Talk with your friends yeah. about something other than this stupid freaking disease. Sure. Although, yeah. it, although it's difficult to. So I know I mean, it get, is get, get that too. off the table. Start with that. Like, you know, kind of we did. Yeah. Start. It's Corona. It's scary, whatever. And then talk uh, about something else entirely. You have friends or you have colleagues or whatever that you talk with talk about something else that's a great way to pass time too yeah find out what they're watching maybe yeah that, that kind of normal yeah so sure. one thing i would say is like to everybody you guys also it's like just, hey stay healthy stay safe of course yeah and yeah. We'll, we'll get through this nothing lasts forever for sure and i don't think this will by any stretch so and, and we don't intend for this to impact our uh, podcast schedule so if you're a listener don't worry we're not going to plan on going anywhere i mean unless yeah, one we're of doing us gets, an extra one look yeah. at this right yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. we record we're from our home enough <laughs> to have to go into a studio to record we're just <laughs> yeah. sitting here yeah. dead 
so that's true. Right. You guys were okay. It's a, I know, it's funny. I'm like watching all these uh, talk shows. They're all doing it from their homes and yeah. stuff. And I'm like, rookie, we've been doing that for two years. We've been doing that for yeah. years. Yeah. Like, you all about shit, that, man. Yeah. <laughs> you see people scrambling to get microphones and headsets and stuff. And the, yeah. Amazon is like a month if you want to buy a headset right now. And I'm like, wow. I got a stack of them. Are you kidding me? You rookies, <laughs> noob. noob. Oh. <laughs> Before we go, of course, as usual, uh, I'd love to uh, give my appreciation to all the folks who support us over on Patreon. I won't do the out of breath <laughs> list of everyone. It's dynamically changed. I'm not sure when this will air, but everyone who supports us over on Patreon literally gives a few bucks a month to keep things cooking. I know things are kind of tight right now, but if you have a little extra and you feel like supporting Gen X Grown Up, we would love for you to just head over to patreon.com slash Gen X Grown Up. Check out the options there. Maybe you'll find something you like. Drop us a line. Let us know how you're doing. And maybe if you have some suggestions about how Absolutely. to kill time yourself, oh, yeah. Yeah. let us know. We'll share it with yep. our Gen X Grown Up fan base of one. And <laughs> find us on social or hit us at podcast at yeah. Gen X Com. Let's communicate. Let's make the yeah. most of the time that we're stuck home. Spend it getting to know each other better. That sounds like a great way to kill time. Yep. Well, thanks for joining us for this. Uh, we'll be back with our regular scheduled shows every Thursday, just like we always do. So until we talk to you again, I'm John. George, thank you for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. Hey, man, always fun. Fourth listener, all three of us appreciate you guys most of all. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. We're also an affiliate of the Geeks Worldwide Radio Network. You can check them out at the GWW.com. <clears throat> My microphone is going to have to get some more ranch. My microphone's dipping. <laughs> <laughs> You've been dipping into your ranch dressing. Is that the problem? I, but I haven't. It, it should it should be the same way as it always was. That's the thing. Get more ranch because your microphone's dipping. <laughs> I know. I was like, wow. I, I'm not sure how to interpret that. That's like just bizarre. Right. But I can't go to the grocery store because they won't let me go. God damn it! Another victim of the coronavirus. <laughs> I'd love to go driving around just to see the empty streets and. Hold a second, sorry guys. Yikes. My dog's making noise. <laughs> Shh. Okay, we should be good. Okay. Thump. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fucking dick. <laughs> he will trouble us no more. <laughs> this is right. Never a problem. <laughs> Where? All right. <laughs> let's, let's get cooking. And all right. There's your bloopers for the end. Yeah, they're all set. Just knock those out right away. <laughs> Tick that off. <laughs> yeah, we never seem to have a problem with that. No, that's that's true. Coming up on Five Minute News. I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not. It's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.